Welcome back to your live official continuing coverage of Photo Plus Expo 2015 here at the Jacob K. Javits Center in New York City. I'm Be Terrific, I'm Michael Larchis, you're the Terrifics, you make Be Terrific special. I am so excited, we just have more to pack in, more to pack in all day long. It's one great guest after another. I'm very excited about this guest because we use their products all the time. First of all, our video switcher uses their capture cards in the switcher. Number two, we use all of their products, and I think just about everybody who does something in video uses their products at some point these days, any production company for sure, without a doubt. When we're in Vegas doing the FAA MA show, just like this, but the a Federal Aviation Administration show, <laughs> when we're doing that in Vegas, and, and we had the set built there, right, just a few days ago, we were using the Blackmagic pocket cameras and a Blackmagic <coughs> cinema camera as our cameras in the setup. They worked wonderfully. When we did Get Geek the week before in New York City, we used their cameras for this mobile setup just like this. So we use their products all the time. Their products are usually behind the scenes. And we shot a national Olympic television commercial that aired on television and was shot with the Blackmagic pocket camera. So I've got my co-host, Andrea Fasano, joining me, of course, and Bob from Blackmagic showing us the amazing brand new Ursa Mini. The Ursa came out uh, about a year and a half ago. Some of the features on the Ursa that are amazing is you're able to change the sensor in the camera right, um, and, and upgrade it. Uh, it, was, uh, it started out with 4K and then there were sensor upgrades and different mounts available uh, for different kinds of lenses. And of course, all these mounts today are pretty much interchangeable because you can do all sorts of adapters. You could shoot uh, you know, uh, Blackmagic uh, or DM, Cinema DNG RAW right. um, and all sorts of other formats. And it was a cinema tool making camera. This was a great camera for filmmakers and for getting everybody to collaborate on set. So on one side, you had an LCD screen and you could have uh, somebody marking time code. You also had another LCD screen for the audio guy, and you had a huge iPad sized screen, which was the viewfinder on the camera. Uh, really, really awesome, innovative, different camera, um, and it was the flagship in the line. Of Ooh. course, you have the uh, cinema, the pocket, the 4K cinema, and now the Ursa, and now Ursa Mini, which I'm very excited about. So, yeah. sorry to make you restart that, no but problem. we had a microphone go bad, quickly well, adjusted it. Well, as you say, the Ursa Mini is sort of a derivative from the original Ursa. Uh, the, uh, the original Ursa does have the upgradable <laughs> sensor. This does not, but it does come in both the new 4.6K as well as the original 4K sensor. So this is one of the 4K sensor uh, versions that's uh, coming out soon. And uh, in this one, we actually, because it's, it's more of a ENG style shape, we added at uh, IBC, we added on the PL mount is a new option to put B4 lenses. So wow. the traditional, you know, rocker zooms that the sure. ENG guys like myself, maybe back when used. Uh, so they have on the PL version of both the 4K and 4.6K, you can add those type of uh, ENG style B4 lenses. And uh, so with full uh, control like you would with a studio camera. So what I really like about this that I'm already seeing is you've got this great viewfinder that looks amazing. In addition, you've got a ro uh, an arm on a Rosetta uh, you know, mount mm. that also gives you what a traditional video camera would give you when you were using an ENG rig, and that is zoom and maybe even focus control. Am I, am I in the ballpark there? Well, what, what, what you get um, with this is you're able to hit record and, and do auto, auto uh, iris and, and, and focus wow. and things like that, right. On the new PL version, you can actually get the, use those uh, Right. The lenses that have the built-in automatic, you know, the, the Zoom rocker, rocker zooms. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so there's a combination of of you of uses depending on the mount that you have. This is a this is a, a, a an EF mount, I think. Yep. So this is the EF mount. I, I like the EF mount. To me, uh, for ENG guys, I think it's a good use. Uh, the PL mount also a good use, and and the the other mounts as well. Um, now I see that you also have a spot on the plate for rails, which is great because you can put all sorts of accessories yep. and uh, and you can do follow focus. Yeah, exactly. And this also has the quick release plate, so it goes straight from the tripod onto the shoulder uh, easily without you know just. I back. love how the shoulder pad is built right in. It seems like when we started doing DSLRs. We forgot about mounting the cameras on shoulders. We started making all these crazy rigs. They became heavy, unwieldy, never balanced right. Yeah. And now you guys have really focused on, okay, we can have some of these cameras in a different form factor. 
like the cinema camera, like the pocket camera, which is the most amazing form factor, okay. and people can rig them out if they want or not, but then we can take a camera like this and we can have it ready to go. Yeah, I mean, this is the idea that we've built the, um, the shoulder mount kit as, a, as an option, but it, it comes the handle, the, the, the built-in plate that fits right into a Sony plate, and the extra arm for the, uh, for the rosette. So the thing is that uh, we were seeing what people were doing to the original camera by building an erector set around it, and we thought, <laughs> well, what if we gave them what they wanted? Why don't we give them the erector <laughs> set? So, yeah, right, so I mean, it, the camera starts at $3,000, and well, it so has the, the five-inch flip-out screen, wow. and you know, so you really let have me, a lot of, uh, let me take a lot of tools on there. And, and show that off really well, um, because this is really awesome. And, and let's talk about some of the other features, because that's what I wanted to say. It's so reasonably priced, it's, it's almost absurd. Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, that's what you guys are known for, right? That well, you just are reasonably priced, but. That's the idea, I mean, our thought is, you know, if we can put really great tools into people's hands at a reasonable price, then people will be judged by the work that they do, not the how much money they spent. Right, I like that, I like that a lot. So that'll take, uh, it looks like two CF cards, is that yeah, correct? Yeah, yeah, these are CFAST2 cards that yeah. you can use to record on here, and uh, it'll do raw up to 60 frames per second in 4K, 120 wow. in, uh, in HD. Wow, and yeah. then, uh, you can export to, uh, can you do HDMI or SDI out? There is a there is an SDI out on here. Oh, uh, there's two those. actually, one for the viewfinder and one for, uh, for, for output to whatever, a monitor or external monitor, recorder. You got the headphone jack, XLR inputs. Yep. I mean, this camera's ready to go. It's got time code in and out or reference that you can switch. Has the SDI in, so if you're using this with an ATEM switcher, you can actually do the camera control unit from the ATEM software. Wow. So it'll work, and the headphone jack becomes a headphone slash mic, so you can talk back to the director. Oh, wow. that's great. So the, yeah, the ATEM is your video switcher. You have a whole line, they start at about $1,000. Correct. Go up from there, you can do 4K live switching. They work really well with the Blackmagic studio cameras, which are take that iPad concept yep. to a studio level, and then you build in DaVinci Resolve uh, a version of DaVinci Resolve to be able to paint the cameras in real time for your live broadcast. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, leveraging a lot of the, the acquisitions we've done over the years to kind of blend them all together. You know, from the from the Terranex uh, conversion to the DaVinci Resolve color correction, it all kind of blends together. Uh, if you don't mind, I got to give this back to the booth. Yeah, right. absolutely. Um, one last question about <laughs> sure. it real quick, and thanks for showing it off here. I know that's kind of an exclusive yeah, and, and super on. awesome. That's beautiful, it's, it's amazing. Um, <laughs> One last question about that camera before they actually cart it off is, uh, what are the different formats I can record in? Is it is it only Cinema DNG or can I go to ProRes and are, is it only film mode or, or can I get a more saturated image? No, yeah, we can we can do um, uh, ProRes uh, all the way up to 4K. They're QX or uh, you know, so I mean, you have from proxy all the way through on HD or or 4K. And uh, you also can do either uh, Rec 709 or film. Okay, so Rec 709. For you the, can bake it in. The people who don't know is uh, it is the 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 color space that television news that ENG cameras use, um, and that is built in all the cameras. It's not the most flattering, but it's what everybody needs. Uh, and, and uses for television, it's a safe space. So if you need to shoot something and turn it around exactly. without having the time to color correct it, that's what you right. use. That's yeah, it, it, it's the video space that they use because you know in news you don't have all day to color right. correct something, no. so you want to do that. But what we have also have now is uh, our new video assist, which is a five inch touch screen with a built-in SD card recorder. So in theory, you could use that camera. You with could Lutz? With, pardon me? You're going to say with Lutz? Well, what I was going to say is what you could do is you could record that in in um in uh in like ProRes yep. right while you're recording raw inside the camera wow so you take that the SDI right. out and this way you, you you basically could record proxies or whatever simultaneously and it's four hundred ninety five dollars plus it gives you an extra screen wow now, that's is there really a microphone cool. on that oh yeah two mic inputs on the back there that, is. yeah yeah with the uh, phantom power and and, and and all that you yeah. guys okay. have thought of everything there. well you know you tried it when you when you analyze what people were adding yeah. to the original mm -hmm. one like well we could put that in there we could put that in there we could put that in there i noticed on the door for the lcd there were all these controls that looked like play record maybe even it, uh why are like there controls keypad. on the outside when they're on the door like that so if you're looking in the in the viewfinder and you want to look at playback there because it's Genius. a great oled display 1920 by 1080 uh resolution it's really crisp but this way you can Play it there, great or play it off the monitor. You sure. know, if you're playing out great for bright wow. sunlight. Wow, yeah. you guys, I like that. That you guys <laughs> think, okay, you listen to the feedback, you look at Absolutely. how people use it, and you go, okay, we need to make this change, this change, this change. And you do a lot of firmware upgrades too, like with the pocket camera. When it came out, it didn't have 
uh, audio meters. You didn't have, uh, you certainly had a record light, but it didn't tell you record time left on the card, right. all these other things. You end up building that in. Formatting cards. I mean, oh, oh my God. Yeah. We're up on the mountain. <laughs> we brought a computer. It was 14 below. We oh rented my. a whole mountain, the, the ski jump in yeah. Park City, Utah, wow. the, the Olympic training facility. And it's 14 below, and we had uh, a butane heater on the computer oh to keep God. it hot so we could format the cards. Wow. Yeah, just to format wow. the cards. Wow, That's wow, crazy. wow. Meanwhile, you were freezing. Uh, actually, <laughs> I was, yeah, I was, I was freezing. But the cards were safe. The yeah. cards were safe. We did a whole behind the scenes that uh, was on planet5d.com and made yeah. its way around. Yep. And uh, you guys loved it. You called awesome. me up. Oh, yeah. Uh, I was like, Black Magic is on the phone. Wow. <laughs> I'll take that call. Yeah. It, we had a lot of fun with no, that. No, no. That it, it, uh, we've added that. I mean, it's amazing to me now to see in only two and a half, three years from the start of all the things that we've added to the cameras, you know, trying to do whatever we can to add the features that, that, that are, you know, need. Yeah. yeah. Talk about how important, you know, the fact that you are really showing everybody, that everybody, you, you've shifted the, the entire focus, right? You've shifted the way people think. It, it's really an interesting thing that now everybody is looking at color timing, everybody's looking at grading, whereas you used to shoot, edit, and be done, especially with independent films, film schools, mm -hmm. all sorts of stuff. Now, not only can everybody film, uh, color grade, but you can do it in a matter of minutes and you can do it on set while it's actually happening. Yeah. And of course you can add LUTs. All of this is because of black magic. There's no question in my mind, nobody could ever doubt that. Obviously the consumers, the people who are doing this, the, the people who are buying the products want to push those boundaries, yeah. but, and, and make their products better and, and show the dynamic range and the detail and all that stuff no matter what they're shooting on, but if it wasn't for DaVinci Resolve and making a free version, right. and then having the the, uh, the, the the wheels, the color wheels, and then building it and making cameras that it's built into, because nobody else did really did raw on an affordable camera until you guys did, you know, it's it's really interesting. It, it, it really, the, the whole, uh, I came from DaVinci, yeah. so I went from being the youngest guy in sales at DaVinci to the <laughs> oldest guy at Black Magic over the weekend, so it's <laughs> kind of rough, but it was six years ago, but it was amazing, you know, we, we used to sell turnkey systems were $300,000, you know, and now the software is free, but uh, but the thing about it is we keep adding to it. I mean, we just put in a full nonlinear editor. Wow. So, you know, and the thing that we do with the cameras is, it, it Which, by the way, makes a lot of sense because why do I got to round trip this thing 85 times? I got to come out of DaVinci Resolve, go into Premiere or Avid or even Final Cut, then go back into DaVinci Resolve, then export from, it's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> well, but, but the thing about that is also, the more editing we add, the better we can round trip to those programs because there's certain people that that's what they use sure, and that's, that's fine. Working. But this way, the round tripping is easier to hand off to the to the colorist because the colorist that's what they want. They right. don't want to go. Oh, what did you guys do here? Right. This way, they have a better a better uh, round trip experience if they are still using it. But if you want to learn how to edit for free, you know, here's a great <laughs> software program. Well, and I think what's great too that's is so you great. can edit in it, and then the color timer can see what exactly what your edits are. If you're editing in it, you're giving them all your data. Yeah. And and and. I think that that makes a lot of sense. I cut you off. You were about to say something. No, no. I was just going to say that, and and the the full version comes in the Ursa Mini and 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 the cameras that are like two thousand dollars and up. And when it's a thousand dollar software, it's sort yeah. of like you know. Yeah, that's really well. It's funny because <laughs> so Adam, when the cinema camera came out, uh, you had a price break early on to drop yeah. it to two thousand dollars. He's really like, well, it's really a thousand dollar camera because I'm buying the software for a thousand dollars. He was buying the software anyway, so now he got a camera for a thousand dollars and the right. software, or he got the software for free, free and a camera exactly. for 2000 And it was, I looked at it when we first saw it, I said, wait a minute, it's got a built-in recorder that we sell for $1,000, it's got an IO device that we sell for $1,000, it's got a touch screen that's probably worth $1,000, <laughs> and it's got the free, I said, I'm starting to add up to a lot more than 2000 right. you know? So, I mean, you know, we, we outpackaged ourselves. Sure. Uh, <laughs> so, it was kind of crazy. You're like, wait a minute, yeah, those well, other products how's that math a lot work? I think it most works. people shy of Steven Spielberg and Dale Grand didn't even know what a LUT was three years ago. I, and I, now everybody is like LUT, LUT, LUT. Yeah. Look up tables, by the way, if you're keeping score at home. But right, but that's but that is also even uh, digital. Uh, um what we all used to call DI, digital yeah. intermediates, which nobody even uses that term anymore because everything's digital and, and whatnot. But some uh, directors uh, were resistant to doing digital intermediate. They would only stick with film, only wanted to do sh traditional color timing, whatever. Um, uh, you know, but but the way Da Vinci and how it's used at some of the high-end facilities around the world, some of these colorists, they have gotten all these guys into it. And, and it's amazing, now they're buying the camera and then they get the software so they play around with it. Well, yeah, it's, it's interesting that it. you say that uh, Dale Grand was on the NAB show several times. This year he was on again, my NAB show at, uh, every year. And Dale's uh, Steven Spielberg's colorist. 
and color timer, and, and, and he's amazing, he's legendary. And, and we had a conversation this year that, uh, two years ago he said he was, you know, I'm going to work for Steven every time he calls, but he's doing less and less on film, so I'm only doing film, and I, I guess I'm riding off into the sunset, and he's trying to pass on his knowledge and mm. impart it on other people, and he's teaching and doing all this stuff. He made some apps to help teach it. And then this year he said, yeah, the digital stuff's pretty cool. I've been playing around with DaVinci. I think I'm going to, you know, I'm going to I'm going to dust off the old uh, yeah. stuff and start doing some digital stuff cuz he, you know, he's passionate about it. He loves it sure. and he kind of walked away from his career. Well, so you know, what, what's funny there's um, there's a colorist from New York City named John Dowdell and he's been around a long long time and he said he introduced uh, Ansel Adams of all people to color correction. Wow. <laughs> On film back in the old days of, you know, telecine days or whatever. And I said I said, well, uh, I said, how did he, you know, he's known for black and white right. as, a, as a photographer, but he said, he goes, when he saw some of the things you could do with color correction from the original, because he said it was, it was, you know, that it, it blew his mind about some of the things you can do, and, and, and that was 20 years ago. I can't right. imagine what, what anybody, I mean, today, anybody can draw a power window, and you can do, I mean, it's amazing sure. what you can do. So you can't imagine... You know, you're like 20 years ago, nobody could imagine. What is the future? Uh, you know, I mean, first of all, the Ursa Mini is unbelievable. The price point is ridiculous. And then, you know, we have the Ursa, we've got the studio cam, we've got the ATEM, we've got all this stuff, we've got the new recorder, field the new monitor. micro cinema camera that's going to be for the drone. Oh, right. I, oh, my God, I can't even keep all the products straight. <laughs> I know. Well, we had 36 new announcements at NAB, so it was tough to keep them all straight. Are they all shipping that's on time? Uh, not all. Well, some of them have started. Not all of them are out, but they're getting there, and we announced five nor new products at, at IBC, so we have quite a number of products to get out, but, and, you know, and, and then at the same time. How do you, how do, you do that? I, I mean, that's. Say, how do you keep up? Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, it's hard as a spokesperson to yeah, try and remember sure. every single one, but we do do it. But the thing about it is, like, you, you sort of see how nothing is really replacing anything. They're augmenting them. Right. You know what I mean? Like, the new micro cinema camera doesn't really replace the pocket camera because the pocket not. camera has a screen on it. This one doesn't. This is supposed to be up in the plane. Mm -hmm. I mean, so I think that we're trying to grow the products to fit the needs that people seem to be requesting. Well, so it's really interesting because that you say that because years ago, or and when I say years ago, Andrea, I mean, like, <laughs> two years ago. Um, I've been calling him out on that. I'm like, what was that, 10 years yeah, ago? Yeah, I'm like, oh, I know this guy a long time. She's yeah. like, really? How long is a long time? I'm like, actually, I know Three you years. longer. I'm like, what? Um, but, uh, you know, years ago, when I say two, uh, you know, as, as early as two years ago, um, if you wanted to put a, 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 a camera on a drone or you wanted to do a, have a camera for a specific use, you had to make your camera work for that, right. either because the cameras were too expensive or there was no camera that existed for that. Mm -hmm. And you guys are finding all these niche markets and going, okay, we can plug something in that's affordable there, plug something in so I can have a pocket camera and a cinema camera and a drone camera and a this camera. And one production company can have all these different cameras and right. afford them as opposed to like, well, this is my $75,000 camera and it's also yes. got to be my crash cam and my helicopter yeah, cam yeah, and yeah. my this cam, you know? got to do it all. Well, you know, we've had a couple of instances where people bought our original production camera as a crash cam. Yeah. And, um, but they said that, that, that it survives the crash just fine. It's the lens wow. that breaks every time. <laughs> you know? And there was a guy who used one on a drone that went up 75 feet and then the engine oh, died. Oh, I was going to say and that. They have the footage of the thing falling <laughs> to the ground and then you see clink and it kind of, it was the it was the uh, lens snap. Sure. And then uh, they basically, they took that camera, put another lens on and made a video and said, you guys rock because this thing just fell 75 wow, feet and it's, and it's all dinged up a little bit, but it's still working and it recorded this and, and here's the video and then they show the somebody. <laughs> and it's amazing that you put it on a drone because that camera was, it's, it's heavy. Yeah, yeah. Well, they had a, they had a, like an eight, uh, eight, an eight rotor yeah, yeah, copter, eight rotor but still, copter, I mean, still, like, yeah, but it was working and they were loving it, except that, you know, they wanted more out of it. They want to be able to control more. And that's what the new micro has the, the S bus. So you can control everything and it has a composite video output so they can see what they're shooting. Right. Wow. Excellent. Excellent. Can you tell me as a company, how you do respond to the consumer? Like what, in what methods do you really react to? We, we try to listen. I know I talk a lot, but we actually do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, by the way, I hear he's at Caroline's the rest of the yeah, week. Yeah. Thank you. Don't eat the veal. But but uh, no, the, the, the truth is, um, like at NAB, when we brought out Ursa Mini, everyone said, now that's a shoulder mount. Wouldn't, it would be great if we could use the broadcast B4 lenses for HD and then maybe move to the PL glass, 4K glass for for ENG style okay. stuff. And we're like, all right, let's see what we can think about that. Yeah. So. Between NAB and IBC, boom! At IBC, we had working models on the, on the show floor to say, "Yeah, all right, this is we build a we build a, a, a an adapter that has glass in it that does the proper 
translation mm -hmm. from the three chip expecting lens, because that lens expects red, green, and blue, okay. and yet we put in a dot so it hits the chip right and, and it works perfectly and it was just amazing to think that we could respond that quickly. Yes. And again, we were saying, we introduced a couple new. Uh, we, there's a new card that we have uh, uh, that's used for like like what you were building here. You're telling us how you use our card. Yep. There's a new eight. Um, it's called the Quad Two that has eight SDIs, but you can use them as either in or out. So you can build like six inputs and two outputs. Right. We we actually talk about all the time. Should we do that? Because we're always looking for more inputs. We use the uh, the shuttle intensities as well to get other inputs. Right. Uh, the the ones that you can go Thunderbolt to HDMI. But yes, I mean, that's a great card, actually, the one that's out now, and then you have a new one coming out. Um, and, and we talk about it all the time, but then we go, eh, I don't know, we're good with these, <laughs> because these give us HDMI in or out, uh, or I mean, HDMI or SDI in and, right. in and out. So, I don't know, that, I mean, it's a trade-off, but we certainly could. I, sometimes we go, we should put one of those in, then we have eight extra inputs. And, and that's the thing, yeah. you know, it's a flexibility thing where uh, what, what we, you had those four by fours, four in, four out, yeah. and people said, but we'd like to determine which ones are right. in, which ones right. are out, if you could do that, and sure enough, you know, so that was direct. We should do that. <laughs> we should do it, and we should do a behind the scenes video, like even installing it, and then making it work. There you go, I like We could that. just open this box up and do it. <laughs> Watch this. Greg's, Greg's, Greg's like, It'll, here, here you go, Greg. Let's have the Greg cam. Yeah. Greg, what do, what do you think, man? Uh, are we we gonna make that happen or what? We we should. It's easy enough. What's oh, with wow. the camera shot it? we got there? There we go. No, we're yeah. good now. It's no, easy it's, enough. Yeah, How long would enough. it take you to do this? Honestly, to yeah. replace to replace cards, 10, 15 minutes tops. Yeah. Ten fifteen minutes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And we could have that up we and might, running. We might go off the air a little bit, but we'd yeah. Be all right. yeah, we'd be right back though. No yeah. problem. We'll do it tonight <laughs> it, it, during the break. He, he'll do it during during uh, the commercial break. There you go. He loves the black magic stuff. I do. I'm glad. That's cool. Yeah, yeah I do too. I, I've been switching some things uh, for internal use, and, and I hadn't been a TD in a long time, so I was like, I was happy to uh, get back into it. It's well, cool. we ordered like 16 of these cards when we wow. built these boxes, and I said, Greg, let's get two extra. He said, why? I said, well, what if one comes bad out of the box? Like, it's just a DOA. That right. happens, right? right? He's like, oh, that's not going to happen. I said, well, what if? <laughs> so we ordered two extras. I said, what if one goes bad a week in? Like, maybe it's just a right. defect. I mean, we're ordering a lot. So it's not spares like... Spares are always a good thing to have. Right, so it's not like we're just getting one. So we, we ordered them. We've had no problems. Knock on something, right? Yeah, no. no problems. So we've got two spares sitting around, and uh, we... we like a couple weeks ago, we were at a show and we thought we had a problem with the card. And I'm like, "Hey, you got the spares?" He's like, "No, it's it's back at the office." <laughs> like, Wait, why is it back at the office? We don't need it there. We need it here. <laughs> Meanwhile, obviously, it was no pro. There was nothing That's wrong. Cool. Yeah, yeah That's it cool. wasn't the card. So, um, yeah. Uh, what about the future, though? What do you think the future is going to be? Well, you know, uh, we're very good about not saying anything. I know, that's why I'm trying to pull it out of you. Yeah, yeah, You're trying yeah, to change the subject. Yeah, You're like a politician. It's too soon. Well, yeah. Too soon. <laughs> too, too soon. soon. Uh, yeah, I, mean, I think it's uh, it's probably too early. I mean, you know, too soon we get six months before any are, are you guys going to go into the consumer market at all? I mean, now that you're making these cameras that uh, go on the drones and stuff, which are especially like a, a phantom-sized drone, yeah. uh, it certainly seems like maybe you could take a run at some company that starts with a G and ends with an O or... Um, you know, some other, you know, products, especially because that's going to introduce you guys to the consumer market. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you never can tell. I think that though, I mean, for now, our focus has been on the professional market. Sure. Uh, some of our pricing seems to uh, indicate that we're in the consumer space, right. but we're really just trying to enable as many people as we can uh, in the pro space. But, uh, you know, that's a different market. It's a different um, business model, but you never know. Who knows? Right before NAB this year, I had heard. His face? I don't know. I feel like he's like a <laughs> poker player. Do you, put, you do? You he's, turning, he's turning bright red. I, I think know. we're getting our answer right but there. Exactly. If I had to yeah. if I had to take a guess off of that, I think I, I think, consumer. yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, 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 you know what, though? I have to tell you, years ago, one of the guys said to me that he says, he goes, I think your next camera is going to have this, 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 and this. And I'm, and I'm just nodding at him. Right. And at the end, he said, either I'm right on or I'm crazy. I don't know which. And I said, well, I guess we'll see. Well, I will say I'm pretty good. <laughs> and, uh, and and I nailed something with the FAA the other day. And the guy, the guy just went, he goes, I can't tell you because I was there and I'm not allowed to tell you. And I go, I know my answer then. And he said, you're a smart man. <laughs> so uh, anyway, well. what, what I was going to say is, um, you know, I, I think the product line is amazing. Right before NAB, 
Uh, I got it wrong, by the way, your, your big announcement, because we had heard a lot of buzz, there's going to be another Black Magic announcement right before NAB this last year. And Dan Chung, my cohort at NAB, was, you know, he's a big fan of Black Magic. Yeah, yeah. He's like, something big's coming, something big's coming. And I thought it was going to be a pocket cam too with 4K. So there you go. Well, yeah, I always like to see the guesses. Yeah. You know, some of them are, are close and some of them are way off and whatever. The best is when someone says, and I know someone there. And I'm oh, thinking, yeah. I'd like to know who that guy is. Right. He wouldn't work here anymore. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> um, we don't tell her own sure. staff so <laughs> right right yeah i mean that's absolutely which is makes it easier we, you know? yes yes will no you say hello to kendall and everybody uh, absolutely you got a great team absolutely oh, thanks real quick what what do you think of photo plus the fact that it's becoming more of a photo imaging and video show because of dslrs and you guys clearly wouldn't be here without that happening and i think it's wonderful and the show has really grown over the last week. absolutely i mean you know it's interesting because you know at a at an nav or whatever our we have a big booth and you know we're kind of known or whatever we're not nearly as known here but people are seeing what we're trying to mm -hmm. put out there which is you know there's a lot of transition between still photography and motion capture for lack of a better term you know video and uh, and my own best friend is a is a photographer has been for 40 years and he and i rarely talk about work at all because we're in the, like different sectors and now yeah. suddenly over the last couple of years like oh I need to learn more about video That's and you so know funny. well especially because so, you can pull cinema DNG raw video yeah. at each frame basically as a still as exactly. an image so you can pull that and, yeah. and it's a photo colorists Insane. get the whole raw thing right. and also in resolve we put in raw tools that uh, are, are color tools that mimic their language yeah you know, there's a menu for them wow. very cool wow. thank you Bob thank you for Thanks all your very time much. I really appreciate My pleasure. it he was good, wasn't he? He's awesome. Yeah. Come and back and talk about more stuff. Yeah, <laughs> and, and, absolutely. Uh, we'll be back with a whole lot more here from your exclusive live, continuing official coverage of Photo Plus 2015. I'm Michael Artsis, she's Andrea Fasano. That was Bob from Black Magic Design, blackmagicdesign.com. We'll be back with a whole lot more right after this. Don't go anywhere, you're the Terrifics, and you make me Terrific Special.